so hello and welcome back students to another video tutorial the third lecture of class 10th and here we have already talked in the second lecture about autotrophic mode of nutrition we have already studied the autotrophic mode of nutrition now we will be talking with the heterotrophic mode of nutrition अभी हमने सेक्चर नंबर सेकंड के अंदर ऑटोट्रॉपिक मोड ऑफ न्यूट्रिशन देखा था कि ऑटोट्रॉपिक मोड ऑफ न्यूट्रिशन क्या होता है अब हम बात करने वाले हेट्रोट्रॉपिक मोड ऑफ न्यूट्रिशन की जस्ट अ शॉर्ट रिकैप वी वर लुकिंग इन अवर इन अवर प्रीवियस लेक्चर दैट द ऑटोट्रॉपिक मोड ऑफ न्यूट्रिशन वाज बीइंग कैरीड आउट बाय प्लांट स्पीशीज एंड दीस प्लांट स्पीशीज वर द वन व्हिच वर एबल टू कन्वर्ट टू ट्रांसफॉर्म द एटमॉस्फेरिक लाइट इनटू chemical energy that was being stored in them and then were being utilized by different different types of living organisms so this we have done we have finished the autotrophic mode of nutrition so this is gone and here comes another mode of nutrition which is being represented by this animal and this animal represent the heterotrophic mode of nutrition these heterotrophic mode of nutrition animals usually feed upon the plant resources so these animals will be feeding upon the plant resources because plants are the initial first level of a structural organization in the ecosystem that converts the the light energy into chemical energy and later on this chemical energy is being fed by the animals and these animals will feed upon the energy that has been stored in the case of plants will utilize it in their metabolic processes so what do you mean by heterotrophic mode of nutrition so we are going to talk about the heterotrophic mode of nutrition here so this we are going to talk about heterotrophic heterotrophic mode of nutrition mode of nutrition so heterotrophic mode of nutrition heterotrophic mode of nutrition operates in the case of animal species and these animal species depend directly or indirectly upon the plant species for their nutrition takes place in that uh, takes place in animal species animal species which depends directly or indirectly upon which depends directly or indirectly upon the plant species upon the plant species for their food and nutrients this is the heterotrophic mode of nutrition one which cannot synthesize this, uh, their own food by themselves and depends upon the plant species for the food and nutrition the food sources in the case of animal species could be stationary as well as could be mobile so food sources food sources in the case of heterotrophs can be stationary as well as can be mobile stationary for example the plant species animals are directly feeding on the plant species or then there are tertiary consumers such as lion tiger etc those which will be feeding upon the moving moving food material that is mobile food material so how food is being assessed that will determine the nutrient quality of the food food kis tarike se mil raha hai uski quality kya hai wo animal ki feeding habit ko determine karne wali hai how the food is assessed how the food is assessed how the food is being assessed for example there could be herbivore which could be directly feeding upon the plant species there could be let this be uh, any other herbivore that is directly feeding upon the plant species this is the primary mode of nutrition in the case of heterotrophs or this animal species can also be feeding upon the product of the plant species this is feeding upon uh, your roti and then it is being feeding upon this uh, bread uh, the localized bread and then such type of nutrition can also take place for example there is a type of nutrition that i have tried to elaborate here in the case of lower eukaryotic animals such as in the case of lower eukaryotic animals such as in the case of amoeba in the case of amoeba that is the protozoan how the food is being assessed the protozoan spreads its arm in the form of pseudopodium 
प्रोटोजोन्स जो है वो किस तरीके से वर्क करते हैं प्रोटोजोन्स अपनी आर्म को स्प्रेड करते हैं सूडोपोडिया की फॉर्म में दिस सूडोपोडिया इनगल्फ द टारगेटेड फूड मटेरियल द टारगेटेड फंगल सेल द टारगेटेड एल्गल सेल द टारगेटेड बैक्टीरियल सेल इज बीइंग इनगल्फ बाय द सूडोपोडिया जस्ट रबिंग दिस आउट सो एज टू प्रोवाइड यू अ क्लियर कट पिक्चर हियर ताकि आप इसे क्लियरली देख पाए the pseudopodia have engulfed the food material so if i am an amoeba and i am going to engulf any material supposing this is a bacteria and i am going to engulf it then i am going to engulf it like this no i am not uh, uh, grabbing someone i am trying to engulf a bacteria or a fungal or an algal species here so this is pseudopodia and this is the bacterial or fungal species bacterial or fungal species fungal species which had been encapsulated within the pseudopodia and had formed and had led to the formation of a food vacuole and the food particles have been entrapped in it so there is a food vacuole and the food particles have been entrapped in it this is the ingested food particle that is present here the ingested food particle is present and ultimately the food particle is going to be engulfed within the food vacuole there would be the formation of a food vacuole here it will lead to the formation of a food vacuole this is a food vacuole which is being produced okay now mechanism of food digestion mechanism of food uptake we have seen there could be a direct uptake or there could be uptake digested food that means there are basically two types of mechanism of food uptake in the case of heterotrophs which are the two types of mechanism of food uptake one is the heterotroph may secrete its digestive enzyme over the food material digest it extra cellularly and then engulf the partially digested food ek tarika ye ho sakta hai ki bhai food material ko bahar digest karwa liya bahar digest karwa ke us and us partially digested food ko wo heterotroph consume kar liya such type of mechanism of consumption in the case of heterotroph is referred to as saprophytic mechanism of consumption another type of consumption could be to digest inside after uptaking the food that is within a well developed alimentary canal okay so on the basis of uptake of food material on the, so this is over on the basis of uptake of food material after uptake of food material after uptake of food material food material the digestion can be extracellular or out of the body or it could take place within the body digest outside digest outside the mechanism of digestion is referred to as saprophytic mechanism of food acquisition in which the digestive enzymes are poured over the in digestive enzymes are poured over the food material over the food material material and partially digested food and partially digested food is ingested digested food is ingested into the body into the body okay so this is the partially digested food is ingested into the body this is referred to as saprophytic another mechanism of nutrition could be to take the food and digest it inside the body digesting the food inside the body digesting the food inside the body via via the use of enzymes the use of enzymes within a within a well developed elementary canal elementary canal okay so there might be a, could be an elementary canal in which the entire food digestion can take place 
So the basic digestion can be divided into two different types intracellular digestion and extracellular digestion. Intracellular digestion takes place in the case of simple organism. When the food is digested within the cell, for example, in the case of amoeba, what was happening? Amoeba was coming and engulfing the food material. So the digestion is taking place within the amoebic cell. This is called as intracellular digestion. When the digestion is taking place in a hollow cavity inside our body, then such type of digestion is said to be the extracellular digestion. In the case of Homo sapiens, in the case of humans, the digestion is extracellular. हमारे अंदर डाइजेशन एक्स्ट्रा सेलुलर है हमारे सेल्स के अंदर डाइजेशन नहीं होता हमारी एलिमेंट्री कैनाल में डाइजेशन होता है जहां पर एंजाइम्स की मदद से हम कॉम्प्लेक्स फूड मटेरियल को सिंपल फूड मटेरियल में ट्रांसफॉर्म करते हैं द डाइजेशन इन द केस ऑफ होमो सेपियंस इज एक्स्ट्रा सेलुलर इन व्हिच वी यूज एंजाइम्स टू ट्रांसफॉर्म कॉम्प्लेक्स फूड मटेरियल इनटू सिंपलर फूड मटेरियल्स एंड दस दो सिंपलर फूड मटेरियल्स आर बीइंग एब्जॉर्ब्ड इन आवर ब्लड ओके this is how digestion takes place this is how uh, the simple mode of digestion occurs in the case of animals now let us have a focus upon nutrition in the case of human beings so how does human beings grab the nutrients how does human being uptake nutrients from the food nutrients se ko oh, human being kaise obtain karte hain food se i have now only told you just the last point that is remaining there are two different types of digestion one it could be an extracellular digestion another one could be an intracellular digestion so the digestion could also be digestion can also be of two different types one is intracellular another one could be extracellular intracellular digestion is going to take occur in the case of amoeba lower eukaryotes whereas the extracellular digestion is going to take place in the case of higher eukaryotes higher eukaryotes within the higher eukaryotes through a specialized system through a specialized system called as digestive system through a specialized system called as digestive system now we would be talking about uh, how the digestion takes place or nutrition or uh, nutrition in the case of human body is, uh, is being absorbed so let us focus upon the human body we will be talking about the human body we will be talking about the different uh, uh, digestive the different component of our digestive system which have been enabled to um, to aid in the digestion of food material and for the absorption of nutrients so abhi hum dekhne wale hain humans ke andar digestion kaise hota hai kis tarike se humans ke andar nutrients ko absorb kiya jata hai क्या प्रोसीजर्स होते हैं हाउ दिस न्यूट्रिएंट्स आर बीइंग एब्जॉर्ब्ड इन अ स्टेप बाय स्टेप मैनर अलोंग द एलिमेंट्री कैनाल इन आवर बॉडी एंड हाउ दीस न्यूट्रिएंट्स आर बीइंग ट्रांसफर्ड इनटू द ब्लड स्ट्रीम सो लेट अस फोकस हियर अबाउट द न्यूट्रिएंट्स न्यूट्रिशन इन द केस ऑफ ह्यूमन बीइंग्स ओके आई एम जस्ट फोकसिंग आउट आई एम जस्ट ज़ूमिंग आउट एंड ट्राइंग टू फोकस इट ऑन द ह्यूमन बीइंग ओके सो हियर वी आर now you would be able to visualize the entire human being okay so here we are so nutrition in the case of homo sapiens the nutrition in the case of homo sapiens occurs through a specialized system called as digestive system now nutrition in the case of human beings nutrition in the case of human beings occur through a specialized system which is referred to as digestive system let us focus upon the digestive system the components of the digestive system which are the different components of the digestive system how this digestive system is made up of different components which are the different components let us focus upon it okay so here we are okay so see in the case of humans you nutrition in humans in the case of humans first humans humans are also heterotrophic organisms humans are heterotrophs 
These are all heterotrophs. They are all heterotrophs. Thus, uptake the food material from different plants. Thus, we are the, we are the one that would be uptaking the food material from different plant species. Just one second. We uptaking the food material from uptake food material, food and nutrients directly or indirectly from plant species or indirectly from plant species okay so we are going to take this directly or indirectly from the plant species now in the case of homo sapiens in the case of humans there is a very well developed digestive system that helps in the acquisition of nutrients from the food that we consume okay there is a very well developed a well developed a well developed digestive system system helps in the digestion of food material digestion of food material within our body how does this digestion takes place this digestion takes place with the help of certain proteins called as enzymes these enzymes are biocatalyst that have the ability to catalyze the different biochemical reactions किस तरीके से हम फूड मटेरियल को इस्तेमाल करते हैं और किस तरीके से उनसे न्यूट्रिएंट्स को एक्सट्रैक्ट करते हैं क्योंकि हमारी बॉडी के पास में है कुछ इंजाइम्स जो इंजाइम्स हमारी बॉडी के अंदर सीक्रेट होते हैं इंजाइम्स होते क्या हैं इंजाइम्स आर बायो कैटलिस्ट दे आर प्रोटीन्स इन नेचर दे हैव द एबिलिटी टू कैटलाइज द बायो केमिकल रिएक्शन एंड दीज आर द वन व्हिच आर रिस्पांसिबल फॉर ब्रेकिंग डाउन कॉम्प्लेक्स फूड मटेरियल इनटू सिंपलर वंस द प्रोसेस ऑफ डाइजेशन इज मीडिएटेड बाय इंजाइम्स the process is mediated by enzymes is mediated by enzymes which have the ability which have the ability to convert complex food materials complex food materials into simple ones into simple ones okay so they have the ability to convert the complex food materials into simpler ones by catalyzing biochemical biochemical interconversions so these are the ones that are going to catalyze certain biochemical interconversions now let us look at the different components of the digestive system that is shown in uh, in the figure to you so there is the buccal cavity the first cavity which is present buccal cavity this is the tongue the first part of the digestive system starts with buccal cavity the opening of the mouth the opening of the mouth is referred to as the buccal cavity and it is in this cavity that we have a tongue and beneath these tongues there are salivary glands which are located there are certain uh, glandular glands which have the ability to secrete the enzymes and those are referred to as salivary glands salivary glands it is these salivary glands which have the ability to secrete saliva components digestion starts from mouth within the buccal cavity beautiful see in buccal cavity there is a gland which is present called as salivary gland salivary glands and these salivary glands have the ability to secrete a uh, watery fluid which is called as saliva 
which is also referred to as style because it contains an enzyme tyrant or celebrity amylase amylase this celebrity amylase or, uh, or tyrant has the ability to act upon its substrate called as carbohydrate carbohydrates and because of the presence of this saliva this carbohydrates gets converted into simpler sugars simpler sugars you began to feel a grain of a boiled grain of wheat or rice sweet in your mouth because of the presence of this saliva aap jab ek ubale hue dane ko agar khate hain गेहूं के या चावल के और उसे चू करते हैं आराम से उसे चबाते हैं तो थोड़ी देर बाद में आपको उसका टेस्ट मीठा सा फील होने लग जाता है वो क्यों बिकॉज यू हैव सलाइवा विद इन योर सेलेब्री ग्लैंड एंड दिस सलाइवा कॉजेज द कॉम्प्लेक्स कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स टू बी गेटिंग कन्वर्टेड इन टू सिंपलर शुगर्स एंड दीज शुगर्स आर स्वीट इन टेस्ट ओके तो अगर हम स्वीट टेस्ट फील कर पा रहे हैं तो उसके लिए हमारी बकर कैविटी का एक अन्य रिस्पॉन्सिबल है जिसका नाम है सलाइवा जिसका नाम है सेलेब्री अमाइलेस जो कि हमारे सलाइवा के अंदर होता है और सलाइवा का सिक्रीशन कौन करते हैं सलाइवा का सिक्रीशन करते हैं सेलेब्री ग्लैंड ओके इन हायर स्टडीज यूड बी टॉक अबाउट द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ सेलेब्री ग्लैंड कौन कौन सी होती है क्या काम होती है Now there is a tube-like structure which opens, which runs from the buccal cavity into the stomach. This tube-like structure is referred to as oesophagus. Oesophagus. A tube-like structure होता है जो हमारे buccal cavity से हमारे stomach तक जाता है. Buccal cavity से buccal cavity से stomach तक जाता है. इस tube-like structure को हम क्या कहते हैं? Oesophagus. Do not confuse it with this. This is windpipe. ये windpipe है. इसके पीछे जो होता है वो क्या होता है इसोफेगस दिस इज इसोफेगस देन द थोरेसिक कैविटी द थोरेसिक कैविटी ऑफ आवर बॉडी इज सेपरेटेड फ्रॉम द एब्डोमिनल वन विद द हेल्प ऑफ अ ओवल शेप्ड स्ट्रक्चर कॉल्ड एज डायफ्राम लुक हियर डायफ्राम देयर इज अनदर कंपोनेंट इसोफेगस व्हाट वाज द फंक्शन ऑफ इसोफेगस ईसो फेगस कनेक्ट बक्कल कैविटी विथ स्टमक ओके दिस इज द वन विच वुड बी कनेक्टिंग द बक्कल कैविटी विद स्टमक द थर्ड कंपोनेंट दैट इज द फट मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट एंड दैट थर्ड कंपोनेंट इज द डाइफ्राम विच इज थर्ड कंपोनेंट द डाइफ्राम ओके डाइफ्राम जस्ट वन सेकेंड हा इट्स विजिबल टू यू ऑल सो इट इज डाइफ्राम इन द केस ऑफ डाइफ्राम इट सेपरेट्स द थोरासिक कैविटी कैविटी फ्रॉम एबडोमिनल It is the one that has the ability to separate the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. So this is thoracic cavity. This is thoracic cavity, and it is within these thoracic cavity your lungs and your heart is present. So lungs are present here. Then below the diaphragm, there is the abdominal cavity. This entire cavity is commonly called as abdominal cavity. Abdominal कैविटी हम बोलते हैं ना एप्स एप्स बना लेना मेरे तो आपको एप्स दिख ही रहे होंगे तो वाली बात अलग है कुछ ज्यादा ही है ठीक है सो देर इज एन एबडोमिनल कैविटी विच इज प्रेजेंट हेयर दिस कैविटी इज कॉमनली रेफर टू एबडोमिनल कैविटी ऑल द डाइजेस्टिव ऑर्गन आर प्रेजेंट विद इन द एबडोमिनल कैविटी ओके सो हेयर यू कैन फाइंड द फर्स्ट एंड द लार्जेस्ट ग्लैंड विच इज प्रेजेंट इन अवर बॉडी दैट इज कॉमनली रेफर टू एज लीवर Okay, I'm just rubbing this out. The next component, that comes after the esophagus, would be referred to as stomach. 
the stomach. A J-shaped stomach is present in our body. A J-shaped stomach, you can look here. A J-shaped stomach is present in our body. J-shaped stomach is present in which the the esophagus the esophagus opens up it is within the stomach that the esophagus is going to open up and it is going to pour its content into the stomach okay and pours its content and pours its content into it into it okay now this stomach has certain cells which has the ability to secrete acids okay that it is within this stomach that there are certain cells which have the ability to secrete acids as well as mucus the gastric the gastric juice present within the stomach possess several acids which aid in food digestion which aids in food digestion as well as these also perform another very important role. These aids in food digestion. Okay, these are the ones that are helpful in the case of food digestion, as well as perform another very important role. This acid prevents the infection of any other different types of infectious disease. Infectious microbes prevents, protects. Us from the infection of from the infection of different microbes okay so they are the one that have uh, this uh, acid is also going to protect us from the different microorganisms because all the different microorganisms, the fungal species and other different types of species that could uh, that would cause diseases to us are being degraded, are being destroyed by the stomach acid which has a very low pH of 2 to 4. Okay. Now, there, how? If there is an acid present in your stomach, then what is going to happen? That acid can also degrade the walls of the stomach? No, because over the walls of the stomach, there is 1 to 1.5 inch thick mucus layer which is present that protects the walls of the stomach. Stomach ki walls ko protect karne ke liye, stomach ke upar kya hoti hai? Mucus ki layer hoti hai. वो प्रिवेंट कर देती है एसिड के एक्शन को और हमारे स्टमक की वॉल के ऊपर एसिड वर्क नहीं कर पाता है द म्यूकस लेयर द म्यूकस लेयर द म्यूकस लेयर ओवर द गैस्ट्रिक एपिथेलियम एपिथेलियम व्हिच कैन बी which can be 1 inch to 1.5 inches thick is protected protected is protecting is protecting the gastric epithelium gastric epithelium from stomach acids acids okay the mucus layer over the gastric epithelium is the one that is going to protect our stomach layers from the acid of the stomach so there is mucus which is present here 
okay there would be mucus which would be present here over the stomach over the entire layer of the stomach this is referred to as mucus the function of mucus is to protect the stomach uh, or the gastric epithelium from the degradative action of the acids that could be present then there is gastric juice gastric juice okay and this has a very low pH then along with at the side of the stomach you can find there is a very large structure that is present this largest gland of our body is referred to as the liver this largest gland of our body is referred to as the liver liver helps in the digestion and the detoxification of the harmful metabolites if they are present in your food any harmful metabolite any drug or any uh, harmful poison like substances if are going to enter into the liver liver has the ability to detoxify them alcohol is actually affecting the liver because liver try to act upon alcohol and in the process produces free radicals that destroy the liver cells itself causing hepatic megaly or liver cirrhosis dekhi alcohol ya baaki jitne bhi molecules hain alcohol hai drugs hain aur jo poison hai jo slow acting poisons hote hain in sabhi ko hamara liver kya karta hai detoxify karta hai to liver hamari body ki ek aisi gland hai jo detoxification ka kaam karti hai food material अगर ये डिटॉक्सीफाई नहीं करेगा तो क्या हो जाएगा हमारा फूड मटेरियल जो हार्मफुल फूड मटेरियल है वो हमारे सेल्स के पास में चल जाएगा हमारे सेल्स की डेथ कॉज कर सकता है ब्रेन की डेथ कॉज कर सकता है कार्डियो कार्डिक मसल्स की डेथ कॉज कर सकता है तो अगर कोई पर्सन ज्यादा एल्कोहल को कंज्यूम करता है तो उससे होता क्या है उससे उसके लीवर के अंदर फ्री रेडिकल्स बनने लग जाते हैं जो लीवर के सेल्स को खराब कर देते हैं लीवर के सेल्स को डिस्ट्रॉय कर देते हैं दिस लीड्स टू लीवर सरोसिस और हेपेटो मेगेली दैट वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड लुक हियर लीवर द नेक्स्ट इज लीवर लीवर रेफर्स टू द लीवर इट इज द लार्जेस्ट इट इज द लार्जेस्ट ग्लैंड ऑफ आवर बॉडी largest gland of our body of our body it aids in the detoxification of harmful molecule it aids in the detoxification detoxification of the harmful metabolites of the harmful metabolites drugs certain poisons alcohol into non harmful ones non harmful ones note very important point a very important point is this that alcohol and other drugs alcohol and other drugs with the liver cannot detoxify they can destroy the hepatic cells of the liver and they can cause liver cirrhosis or hepatomegaly alcohol alcohol is detoxified is detoxified through liver hepatic cells through liver and in the process and in the process forms free radical free radicals these free radicals these free radicals reacts with hepatic cells cells can cause lead to leading to leading to liver cirrhosis check you would have studied you would have heard at least that excessive consumption of alcohol causes liver cirrhosis then there is another gland that is present along with the liver 
that helps in the secretion of bile juice and that is referred to as the gall bladder the gall bladder this is the gall bladder there is another gland which is present which is commonly called as the gall bladder now what is this gall bladder how does the gall bladder operates gall bladder gall bladder a small gland in association with the liver is responsible for neutralizing the stomach acid and to convert the uh, the food materials the solution of the food materials into an alkaline ph within the large within the small intestine this is the small intestine where the food material is going to enter okay so in the case of gall bladder the gall bladder the gall bladder has the uh, in association with the liver in association with the liver with the liver secretes bile juice bile juice which has the ability to neutralize which has the ability to neutralize stomach acids acids transforming the ph of the food materials from acidic one to the alkaline one transforming ph from acidic to alkaline transforming ph ph from acidic to alkaline this is how the ph has been transformed now the ph of the food material which enters into the small intestine is going to be alkaline in nature within the small intestine there are three compounds that are going to be digested one is referred to as the carbohydrate the other is fat and the third one is proteins okay so now digestion moves into the small intestine there is another organelle which is present which is called as pancreas the function of pancreas pancreas it helps in secretion of certain hormones such as insulin glucagon epinephrine nor epinephrine different types of hormones are being secreted by pancreas it secretes secretes important hormones important hormones and aids in food digestion one important point that i forgot was that the bile salt which are been secreted in the case of gall bladder secretion causes the emulsification of fat the bile salt secreted the note the bile salts the bile salts secreted the bile salts secreted through the gall bladder causes emulsification of fat causes emulsification of fat Uh, this would be visible to you all okay causes emulsification of fat now what do you mean by emulsification of fat emulsification of the fat is a process if you take a test tube 
you add lipids or fat into it lipid or fat and you add salt salt will cause emulsification to take place hence this salt will cause the lipids to be split into fine droplets and this process is referred to as emulsification see what happens in the case of emulsification during emulsification during emuls emulsification of fat emulsification of fat the lipids are broken down broken down into fine droplets in fine droplets with high surface area once the surface area will be larger then the absorption can effectively take place within the small intestine droplets with larger surface area with larger surface area surface area this large surface area large surface area causes enhanced absorption so enhanced absorption is going to take place due to emulsification of fat which is going to take place through the secretion of the bile salts through the bile uh, through the gall bladder then after the pancreas there is the large intestine large intestine and there is the small intestine so now we are going to talk about this small intestine what is the function of this small intestine okay so the small intestine the small intestine the small intestine has the ability to digest carbohydrate proteins and lipids it has the ability it is the it is the site it is the site for the digestion of carbohydrates lipids and proteins okay so lipids were being digested through emulsification of fat Pro carbohydrates digestion takes place because of the amylase which was being secreted then there are other different enzymes which are being secreted within the small intestine and those enzymes those saccharidases are going to act upon carbohydrate and they are going to break the carbohydrates into monosaccharides which will be absorbed in our body okay so the lipids are going to be converted through emulsification emulsification cification into fine droplets fine droplets which would be absorbed proteins and carbohydrates were being degraded with the help of saccharidases into monosaccharides more into uh, oligosaccharides saccharides then into monosaccharides and monosaccharides were absorbed dekhiye pehle se saccharide ko oligosaccharide fir monosaccharide mein divide kiya fir usse absorb kar liya agar hum teesre ko dekhte hain proteins ko proteins ke digestion mein kya hota hai there are proteases proteases are the enzymes that causes the digestion of proteins these proteases include pepsin trypsin these pepsin and trypsin gets activated only at alkaline ph alkaline ph causes them to be activated causes 
their activation. When these are being activated, they cleaves proteins into peptide, cleaves proteins into peptides, peptides into amino acids, and these amino acids are absorbed. These are absorbed in our body. This is how the digestion of protein takes place in the case of small intestine. So this is the basic digestion which is going to take place in the case of small intestine. The small intestine is being followed by a large volume or large size intestine which is referred to as the large intestine. At the initial phase of the large intestine there is a structure which is referred to as appendix. You would have heard about appendicitis. The inflammation of the appendix is referred to as appendicitis and then there is an operation of appendix in which the appendix is being removed called as appendectomy. So now we have to study about the large intestine. Here the, uh, the absorption of food materials start. Last point about the small intestine. Within the structure of the small intestine in the entire structure, in the entire length of the small intestine, length of the small intestine, finger-like projections are present, finger-like projections are present lining the small intestine. So if this is a small intestine, if this is a small intestine, there are finger-like projections which are lining the small intestine. And these finger-like projections are called as villi. These finger-like projections are called as villi. Okay. So there are finger-like projections in the entire length of the small intestine. There are finger-like projections, like projections called as villi. Okay. The presence of these villi greatly enhance the surface area of the small intestine. These villi, villi greatly enhances the surface area, surface area of the small intestine. aiding in the absorption of food absorption of food material aiding in the absorption of food material so that the food material can be effectively absorbed okay then uh, the small intestine is being followed by another large volume or large size intestine which is referred to as the large intestine the small intestine is being followed by large intestine okay we are going to talk about large intestine large intestine at the starting of large intestine a bean shaped structure is present which is referred to as appendix in the starting of in the starting of large intestine intestine a small sized structure called as the appendix is present this appendix helps in the digestion uh, this appendix is a rudimentary part is a vestigial organ which was functional in our prehistoric uh, era ye appendix ek rudimentary or vestigial organ hai aisa organ jo kabhi hamare purvajon mein work karta hoga 
ये ह्यूमन और बाकी एनिमल्स के अंदर वर्क करता था जब हम उनसे इवॉल्व हुए तो वाला पार्ट हमारे डाइजेस्टिव सिस्टम का खत्म हो गया जिससे हम सेलोज को डाइजेस्ट नहीं कर सकते अब और इस पार्ट के खत्म होने की वजह से अब ये अपेंडिक्स की फॉर्म में रह गया है सो अपेंडिक्स इज इट इज अ रूडिमेंट्री पार्ट इट इज अ वेस्टीजियल ऑर्गन अ वेस्टीजियल वीएसटीजीएल वेस्टीजियल ऑर्गन व्हिच वाज फंक्शनल व्हिच वाज फंक्शनल इन आवर एंसेस्टर्स व्हिच वाज फंक्शनल इन आवर एंसेस्टर्स जो हमारे एंसेस्टर्स में कभी फंक्शनल होता होगा एंड एडेड देम इन इन फूड डाइजेशन फूड स्पेसिफिकली द सेलोज डाइजेशन ओके नाउ वॉट इज द फंक्शन ऑफ लार्ज इंटेस्टाइन इन द केस ऑफ ह्यूमन बॉडी हमारी बॉडी में लार्ज इंटेस्टाइन का फंक्शन क्या है द मेजर फंक्शन ऑफ लार्ज इंटेस्टाइन इन अवर बॉडी इज टू कंसनट्रेट Water as well as the nutrients that could be absorbed, as well as dig as as well as to push the excretory material that should be pushed outside the body. The non-absorbed part, which is remaining within uh, our food material, is being excreted out. The large intestine increases surface area. The large intestine intestine facilitates. facilitates water absorption water absorption the muscles of the large intestine catalyzes the peristaltic movement the movement of food particles to take place uh, water absorption water absorption minerals and vitamin absorption water minerals and vitamin absorption in vitamin absorption the muscles of the large intestine even promote peristaltic movement muscles enhances the peristaltic movement the peristaltic movement ultimately pushing the food towards the end of elementary canal which is referred to as anus towards the outs towards outs anus this part mm -hmm. marks the end of the elementary canal marks the end of the elementary canal of the elementary canal through which the food material is being excreted out this is all about the digestive system which was present in the case of humans and this was this digestive system was facilitating the absorption of food materials to take place in our body now there is an exercise which is being provided in ncert in our next lecture we will be looking at that exercise the different types of questions that are being asked we must solve it out okay until then goodbye and best of luck uh, for your classes uh, and this is dr nitin wahi and we will be meeting you soon in our next classes of class 10th we will be updating the sol uh, we will be solving all the different types of your queries and the questions and then we will continue our lecture with cellular respiration over and over thank you thanks a lot